Muslims are quick to say that Islam is peace. What do you understand when this word is said, Islam is peace? Islam, what is Islam? Today, if you ask people, what is Islam? If there's 20 people in the room, 20 people are going to have different ideas what is Islam. So many are going to say Islam is according to what? CNN, oh, I'm sorry, Fox News. He's saying this is Islam. Some people, they say this is Islam because my parents taught me, good or bad, this is Islam. But what is, what is Islam? Islam means a submission to the will of Allah. This is exactly what we were talking about earlier. Submission to that will. Allah has given us a will, and we submit the will to the will of our Creator. You know what? Who is still in charge? He is still in charge. This is the message of the Quran that is explained thousands of times. Allah is still in charge. It may look as if just because you don't believe, everyone doesn't, it doesn't mean that Allah doesn't exist and He's not in charge and He's not running things. He is our Creator. He was, He is, and He will be. So now, the submission to His will means like what the Christians, they say in their Lord's Prayer, what do they say? Thy will be done. Your will, let it be. I mean, you're saying, let it happen. Not our will, your will. You have created us, you know what is best for us, and we follow your will. So, that is Islam. What is peace? If people are thinking peace is when there's no fighting, it's usually what it means, right? Peace means no fighting. There is one meaning of peace. There's so many meanings of peace. They say peace, it is the opposite of war. War is bad, peace is good. Peace means there's no fighting, everyone gets what they want, everyone is happy. So, if everyone gets what they want and everyone is happy, peace is there. Not necessarily. There's so many places in this world, first world countries, let's say. Everyone is happy to pursue their happiness. Everyone is free to get what their heart desires. But there is no peace. Correct or no? There is no peace. There's nothing to stop them. They don't have even the government to really hold them so much according to the lifestyle they want to lead. Because the government says, ah, we don't care as long as you pay your taxes. And you're doing that, but there is no peace. So what is this meaning of peace? His peace is according to the submission of Allah. Who are the people who submit to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? The best ones in creation, the prophets. Yet, according to this logic, if you submit to Allah, you will find peace. If you're a Muslim, you'll find peace. But look at the lives of the prophets. Are they peaceful? They're the most not peaceful. It's the most difficult. You look at the lives of the awliya Allah in this world. Uh, is not at peace. But what we are talking about earlier, why should you be at peace in enemy territory? If you are at peace with your enemy's territory, you are living amongst your enemies and you are at peace, <coughs> what does that mean? Huh? You are monophic. It means you have given up, you don't know what is right and wrong, and you have just joined your enemy then there's no problem. But the prophets, they did not have peace, happiness, da da da, in this world. It's always meaning that it's always difficulty. But their hearts, whatever that they went through, is always at peace. The most difficult things that they go through, their hearts are always at peace. Ah. So now, the most important thing it is where the heart is. Like I said, there can be no fighting. Everything is okay. Everything is good. You can go and enjoy yourself, 
satisfy all your desires and your pleasures and everything, but that doesn't give you peace. Yet we see people that they don't have this uh, uh, opening for them to enjoy from this world. But you look at their faces and they're so much at peace. They accept, they submit. What is that? Because they understand now, they're looking not from this world, they're looking from above this world. They're not looking in this world as if they are trapped inside the jungle. They're high above the jungle and they're looking down. In the jungle, you have so many different creatures and animals jumping one another, but if you are above the trees and you look down, everything is peaceful. Because now you start to see everything as it is, you see things starting to make sense. Why certain things are happening. And slowly now you start to see through the eyes of the one who is above. When you start to see from the eyes of the one who is above now, it is not enjoyment of this world. It is to know what is the design, what is the plan. And what is the plan of this world according to the designer, according to the best of planners. Then that time I say, oh, I'm supposed to go this way. I'm resisting because I thought that was bad for me. I didn't like it. But now I know I have to go this way in order to go this way. I had to go this way to avoid this, but I didn't see it because I wasn't looking from up there. I was looking from down here. Once I start looking from up there, then I know even every difficulty, now it doesn't matter. Like what our uh, article of faith is saying, or Amantu is saying, what? Good and bad coming from Allah. Good and bad is coming from Allah. So now you're not even going to judge it good and bad according to you, but according to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, according to your Creator. Because there are some good, some things that are good, in reality it is bad for you. Things that are bad in reality is good for you. It's according to whose eyes now. According to a child's eye, good is candy. That is good, according to a child's eye. They just want to eat candy. What happens if they just eat candy? If they just eat it, one day, a whole day, they just eat candy. Two days, three days, seven days. What happens to them? They'll start destroying themselves. But according to them, this is good. Now, according to those ones who have the knowledge of them and the candy, it's completely different. So whose eyes are you going to look at? This is important. Whose eyes? If you're just going to take the example from this movie, you're seeing through these eyes of this movie. Just from this book you read, it is through the eyes of this book. Through some philosophers, it is through the eyes of the philosophers. But whose eyes do you want to look at? What are you running after? If you are sincere and you say, I want to look at the one through the eyes of that one, who is the creator of eyesight, of sight, Allah, because Allah sees. <coughs> then you're going to see things in a completely different way. <coughs> then that time, the word peace means something completely different to you than from other people. And that time, just as the prophets, their lives are going up and down, but they have complete peace and acceptance and submission in their heart because they know what the whole plan is and they have reassurance from their Lord. So, what is the meaning of peace? The meaning, I don't have that meaning. I can only say according to what my Shah is teaching me. I'm not going to say from my own understanding. I'm going to say from what my Shah is saying about peace. And what he's saying is what our grand sheikh and 40 grand sheikhs in the golden chain is saying, what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying. Allah bi zikrullahi ta'ma'in kulub. Only in the remembrance of Allah can the heart find 
satisfaction. Peace, one thing, satisfaction is another. How do you satisfy the heart? The heart can never be satisfied. Because the heart, the reality of the heart, it is huge. Everything that is in creation, the heart can contain. The heart can contain. But the heart has been created only as the throne of Allah. So only in the remembrance of your Lord can your heart find satisfaction. You want peace? Remember your Lord. And don't take it. Remembering your Lord means holding a tasbih and just saying Allah, 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 Allah. That doesn't mean that 100% also. The remembrance of your Lord is not just pulling a tasbih or having the zikr in your tongue. It is not through just seeing lights here and there. Who is the greatest one who remembers Allah? Angels, they remember Allah, no? The animals, they remember Allah. The planets, they remember Allah. Everything that is in creation is taking is energy from saying La ilaha illallah. But who is the one who remembers Allah the greatest? Who is the one that Allah says, I remember you? Who is that? Huh? What? No. Who remembers her? Holy Prophet. He is the greatest. Isn't one of his names? What? Sayyidina Zikrullah. That is one of his names. He is the greatest one who remembers Allah. Because now everything that he does, even at our level of just understanding, he remembers Allah. He is never away. So now you want to remember Allah and put Allah in your heart to have satisfaction, then you <coughs> must have that greatest remembrancer in your heart. Because he is the one who is going to teach you how to remember Allah. The Holy Prophet Because he doesn't blink, he doesn't get up and sit and do any action without remembering his Lord, giving praises to his Lord, and for his Lord to remember him, and his Lord to praise him. So what are you saying? Some people get very upset. What do you mean? Our Lord is praising him? Of course. Allah is openly saying I'm praising him. So now, we walk in those footsteps, we try, inshallah. And that time, we will have satisfaction. We may not have so many things that people think is satisfaction or enjoyment or happiness or peace in this world. We don't care. We don't want any other meaning of peace or satisfaction from all these people of this world. We want the uh, real uh, meaning of peace and satisfaction from the real ones. At that time, this unreal world will start melting. <coughs> the real world will show itself, and we will be the winners, inshallah. Al Fatiha. Amen. <coughs>